just about a week, uh, I am going to be at my first ever SCA event. Because on this channel, we're apparently incapable of doing things by halves, I am going all the way halfway across the country to visit uh, Faye Sterling and Opus Eleni for something they have told me is called either War of the Rams or BAM. I don't actually know all that much about this event and uh, I have a lot of sewing that needs to get done. I love medieval costuming. Outside of the SCA, there's not really a whole lot of opportunities to wear it. I am gonna be bringing my camera. I am gonna be documenting what's going on there. All of the sewing I have to do, all of the prep, the packing, the travel. I'm not announcing that I'm going because I wanna get a good impression of how people are gonna treat a newcomer without necessarily knowing that that newcomer is a YouTuber. Is it welcoming? Are, are people kind? Does anything really difficult happen? So I have some sewing to do. My favorite sort of like time period and setting is uh, 12th century England. It makes me feel good to interact with a time where not only do I love the clothes, but there were thriving Jewish communities in that setting. And so the clothes that were really imprinted on Western cultural memory of the Middle Ages, those were my people's clothes too. So I have this pink gown that it's called a blio, this style, that I made a couple years ago and I'm wearing that. And I also have another one that is partially done. I started working on it not that long after I finished the pink one, um, but I wanted to do it entirely by hand. Um, as close to like original practice experimental archaeology as I could get just to see what it would be like. That meant hand sewing with wool yarn because um, there's a, a prohibition in Judaism on wearing garments that have both wool and linen in the same item of clothing. Different items of clothing that are wool or linen, you can wear those together, um, but in the same garment, you don't do that. So this is wool cloth and I am hand sewing it with wool yarn because obviously if you hand sew it with linen yarn, that's wool and linen in the same garment. It's called chatnez and you can't wear that. Anything I make for historical clothing, I want it to be something that could be worn by a Jewish wearer. I'm going to finish that green blio. I sort of got to the, the point of making like the scary cut up the center to put in the center front gores and then put it to the side for a little bit and then just sort of didn't pick it up for a year and a half. We're gonna make the scary cut and we're gonna actually finish it. I even hand wove trim and a matching like girdle, a belt for this out of wool on a tablet loom. Um, I also want to have another kirtle, like a basic underdress. You wear these gowns, these blios over a kirtle, light blue wool, um, sort of a robin's egg blue color. It, and I'm going to make another kirtle out of that. Um, that one I'm going to do by machine. Pattern drafting is easy. It's all rectangles and triangles. And then I have to pack. I have to figure out all of the other stuff I have to bring. I've got about a week and I've also got all of the rest of my life that is going on during that week. So... I don't actually know that I'm gonna get all this done on time. There is a very real possibility that like Thursday at the event, I will be sitting there sewing the hem of the dress I'm gonna wear the next day. I'm told this is in keeping with uh, SCA tradition, but it's not my preferred way to do things and it stresses me out a little. A lot of people camp for these events, but camping is really hard on me with my health issues. So I am very glad Faye and I are not doing that. We have an Airbnb with several of Faye's other friends. So I'll get to sleep in a real bed with a roof and proper insulation and heat and everything. But it doesn't matter where I go. I always end up missing my own bed because my dear sponsor Birch have completely spoiled me when it comes to mattresses. So thanks for that and for sponsoring. Their Cyber Monday sale is running now and you can get 25% off your purchase for a limited time. Check out the Birch site for more details. Birch crafts mattresses and sleep products with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. Their Birch Natural Mattress was just awarded the best mattress of 2023 by US News out of over 340 mattresses and hours of in-person expert testing. Birch mattresses are free from polyurethane foams and fiberglass and instead use natural materials to accomplish the same things those potentially harmful materials are used to do. They own their manufacturing facility so they can ensure it's entirely fiberglass free and use natural materials like 100% organic wool for flame resistant properties. Wool has the added benefit of being hypoallergenic and biodegradable too. My Birch Lux mattress has one of the longest list of third-party environmental and safety certifications I've ever seen on a textile product. GOTS certified, Green Guard Gold, Fair Trade, Forest Stewardship Council. In the year and a half I've had this mattress, I have gotten so spoiled for comfy beds. 
The Luxe mattress is made of eight different layers of organic wool, organic cashmere, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex, with a quilted pillow top for the perfect balance of softness and support. If you love your Birch mattress as much as I do, you can look forward to many years of great sleep thanks to the 25 year warranty. And if not, Birch offers a 100 night sleep trial. They'll even deliver your mattress right to your door, rolled up in a box, and despite being tiny and disabled, I only needed a little help to unpack it and set it up. For bonus convenience, Birch also offers in-home setup and removal. I love my Birch mattress and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch Living. Their Cyber Monday sale is running now. It's the perfect time to upgrade your sleep with 25% off a Birch mattress, plus two free Eagle Rest pillows. Visit birchliving.com slash snappy dragon to find out more about this limited time offer. I'm so excited to see you. <laughs> what is this event I'm going to? Aside from this is the one Courtney said I should visit for. It was originally called Border March Autumn Melees. It's now called War of the Rams, Fort Courtney Nice Kingdom of Onsteora, and then our neighboring kingdom of Glenalvin, which is Louisiana and Mississippi. And we come together, we fight, we have arts and sciences, we have bardics, we have hop dances. Like most SCA events, an excuse to go out and hang in the woods with your friends. And the way we play with them is by declaring war on them for a weekend? Basically. Yeah. It is not as long as some wars go, mm -hmm. but it's also not as short as most like day tripping events. You basically told me like, goodness only knows what the weather's gonna be. <laughs> High 60s, low 70s. It got yeah. down into the low 30s last mm -hmm. year. This is my excuse to just go full on 12th century because I like big sleeves and big skirts. The pink bleo, which is wool. If I thought it was gonna be colder, I might bring the red wool kirtle, but I'm actually trying to retire that one because it's chatnez. I have a blue linen one, robin's egg blue wool that I'm gonna make into another lightweight wool one. Finally picked up and started working on this guy again. So I'll actually have two bleos. As far as headwear, like stick it in a couple braids and throw a veil and a headband on. That's more headwear than I usually wear. I know how you wear your veils and it's how I wear my veils. If it is raining, it'll keep it off of your glasses. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, actually I got contacts. Oh, that's awesome. I have a cloak I can bring. It is not accurate to any particular period. If you have like the luggage space and weight I do. space, I would bring it. If you have a linen dress, mm -hmm. then that will cover you for the hot things mm -hmm. if it gets warmer. But if it gets yeah. cooler, it's easier to layer the things that you're already bringing if you have something to go over it too. I don't know what I'm doing for footwear. If you have boots, bring them or wear them. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have a pair of wellies that I just bring to every mm -hmm. camping event. Don't worry about being overly uh, period in terms of footwear. Footwear and glasses are like the mm -hmm. two things that people are consistently willing to overlook it because they are so often um, mm -hmm. Medicinal. I have like there. one pair of hose and they're linen and I'm gonna bring them, but I'm probably also gonna bring a bunch of knit stockings. I wear yeah. knit knee socks more times than I don't. Same. Okay. What actually happens at this event? There's gonna be lots of fighting. I, I certainly would like my friends to watch me fight in one of the most important cut and thrust tournaments in the kingdom. So much socializing. There's gonna be a wonderful bardic competition. Every year I'm always blown away by the by the merchants, by the artisans. I love speaking mm -hmm. by Artisan Row. There's usually a bunch yes. of different classes that you can be taking if you wanna learn fighting or on different arts and sciences stuff. We're not in character very often. Mm -hmm. You are bound exactly Exactly as much as you want to be bound by historical mm -hmm. precedent and you know things like that mm -hmm. but it's not something that somebody's gonna be like um you're wearing a blio and you're fighting with a rapier and uh we're kicking you off the site now you guys know this part of the reason i don't participate in local sca stuff aside from not knowing a ton of people in it the horror stories one hears a new friend of mine that came up here from san diego and like had to quit her local sca there because of the amount of anti-Semitism. I can't say like across the board that that doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, and I can't even say across the board that that doesn't happen in our kingdom. It has mm -hmm. and it probably will continue, but the tolerance levels for mm -hmm. that happening have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller mm -hmm. over the time that I have been involved in a way that makes me feel like it is still worth it to mm -hmm. be. Yeah. And I mean, hey, you guys even booted your king, so that's something. <laughs> Technically, he was a prince, but that did Still. happen. Faye at one point warned me about like 
people are going to want to hand me drinks at every possible opportunity. That was at least my experience. You were perfectly able to say no or do you have water instead? A lot of people will offer you something more so if they make it. Like if they're brewers, mm -hmm. people want to show off the things that they've done. Yeah. I never had a, an experience where I've been like, no, thank you. And somebody was like, no, really? I would like a thimble of whatever you made so I can appreciate it safely. So there yeah. are things called tasting cups. And you can oh, get perfect. them. And they are. They're like half shot glasses. And I have perfect. a bunch of them. I'll just bring a couple and then you can use one if you want to. Thank you. It is Saturday, early afternoon. I have done all of the construction on the blue wool kirtle, um, but it needs the inside seams finished. It needs the neckline drawn and cut and it needs the hem and cuffs and neckline finished. Yesterday during Shabbat dinner, I did manage to get um, the facings, um, the little reinforcement strips on the sides of the green bleu done, the curved side openings, and then you lace it to fit closely. In order to do that, it's good to have some reinforcement. So I took some strips of straight green from the scrap and sewed them on the inside. Uh, it's straight grain going to a curve, so it didn't want to lay flat, and I did have to get out the iron and press it pretty firmly into place. Hoping that today I'll be able to get all the eyelets done so that I can actually put this thing on um, and then maybe even cut the neckline on the blue kirtle and I can just put them both on, level both the hems, cut both the hems, and just sit here and hem everything for the rest of the day. I am a little bit nervous about whether I'm gonna get everything done in time because even once this has got the eyelet's done, the hem, I still have to do the neckline and the trim. Another unfortunate wrench in the plans is my shoulder has decided it absolutely hates everything today. I managed to get through the machine construction on the blue kirtle, which would have been the bit I was most worried about. I'll take pain meds if I need to, but there's only so much that those actually do. They don't make everything better, they just make it a little bit more bearable. Thankfully it's gonna be mostly hand sewing from here, but still, I did not need this. So, uh. I should probably stop talking and keep stitching. Sunday afternoon, um, yesterday my friend Emily came over um, and we spent a good chunk of the day sewing together. Um, she was kind enough after she'd finished her work to help me hem the blue kirtle. So that is done. This has a hem. Good people. Ahem. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do the neckline and then the uh, the sleeve cuffs, those I think are just gonna be little bitty rolled hems. Meanwhile, I managed to cut and level the hem on the green bleo, and this thing is massive, and I'm doing it with wool yarn, and wool yarn twists weirdly with uh, whip stitches, so I can only work with very short lengths at a time. So I managed to get about half of this thing hemmed, and I still gotta do the rest. I'm gonna see just how much I can get done on this kirtle, and then if I can, I'll, I'll keep hemming and I'll move on to trim. But I wanna get this one done first because this, this blue one's a bit more versatile. Monday morning, progress report. I have finished the hem on the green bleo. Thank goodness, that took forever and a half. I'm sewing this with wool yarn. This is a lace weight wool. If you do whip stitches with it, it sort of untwists and then it starts spiraling back on itself and tangling. I was hanging out with a friend while I was working on this and they suggested, why don't you just spin the needle in your fingers to retwist it? And then I could suddenly work with much longer lengths of this yarn before it became intolerably tangly. Now, the only thing this dress needs is the trim that's gonna go around the, the sleeves and the neckline. Also got, where is it? Uh, the neckline on the blue kirtle finished. This wool is like incredibly squirrely. Um, it behaves like rayon. It's got this amazing drape to it, but it really did not want to roll hem for me. So it's not the neatest work I've ever done, but it's done. This still wants machine finishing on the inside, but it won't be the end of the world if this gets worn with raw edges on the inside. I'll just finish it when I get back. Cutting into the trim is gonna be a little stressful because um, I've never cut into trim I've woven myself before. It's pretty chunky. I don't know whether it's gonna unravel or not, but uh, fingers crossed, uh, we should actually have clothes for the event. I managed to get all of the necessary sewing done. Green Bleo has trim on the neckline and on the sleeves. The blue kirtle has the little neckline reinforcement. The neckline's finished with the rolled hem. It's got cuffs. The inside seams aren't finished, but it's wool, so I don't need to worry about it going in the wash. And I've laid out all of the historical clothes I need to pack at least. I've got the green bleo, the blue kirtle, um, the blue wool kirtle, and then also a blue linen kirtle and my pink bleo that I made a couple years ago. Each of the bleos has a matching girdle and headband. 
veil pins and the little pin for the neckline of the kirtles in here. This was my first tablet weaving project done with that super, super fine wool. I think I'm actually gonna cut this piece in half and turn it into garters to tie socks up with. Two pairs of modern knit wool stockings and then a pair of woven linen hose. Um, and then a pair of modern cotton stockings in case I get too hot. My circular, super fine translucent veil, and then a couple of just plain linen kerchiefs because I don't know, they'll be good for something. Two linen smocks with long sleeves. One's got a high neck with a tie, one's got a low neck. I am checking a bag because there is no way this and my camera gear and all of my other just normal travel stuff is going to fit in the little carry-on suitcase. I've managed to get one outfit of historical clothes into a packing cube and into my carry-on as well as the camera gear, um, some stuff that I just don't want to potentially accidentally end up without, toiletries, and then the rest is all going in check luggage. I'm gonna have a ludicrous amount of space in my check luggage, um, but I don't want to like risk showing up to this event and I don't have anything at all historical with me if something happens to my luggage. Look who I found! Good morning, friends. It is sleepy o'clock. We have a house, little beds. We have a microphone that just fell off the camera. We have a fully and properly dressed Faye. I need to get clothes on, which means I need to unpack this. Nearly all of this weekend's garb has fit in this packing cube that takes up about half of my carry-on suitcase. I will never stop bragging about this. Hi. It's Friday, which means the Shabbos dress is going on. I love it so much. So I've discovered what works best is I just put my hand on the person's shoulder. <laughs> This thing laces up under the arm, which means I can't do it myself because I can't reach under there. This is the site. There are many tents. They're very nice horses, as long as you ask the pet. Remind me today's date. This is Sparrow. Hello, yes. Sparrow. Uh, Cassian, Hi. this is my friend Liana. Hello, nice Hi. to meet you. Good I'm Cassie. You. Oh my goodness, so, so, someone has decided I need to be clean. There's a chair right there. Perfect, yeah. chair. Delfino is using an extra chair as a table. <laughs> So apparently there's an entire ass castle that at some point during the weekend, people will storm. Since people aren't fighting in it, do you want to go up in the tower? Yes. <laughs> Dragons right. love castles. Murder holes. So it's built out of cinder blocks? Yes. For our big melees, it's a timed battle, which means you can have resurrections. <laughs> the way that it worked in the early years was this year 10 of War of the Rams. The amount of resurrections you got in the large shiv melee was based on how many cinder blocks you donated. <laughs> <laughs> and thus we got a castle.
We are here for the Holy Grail. We already got one. <laughs> Murder Where's rabbit. It me. <laughs> Existing mesmerized multiple people that I've taken it out in the presence of. Like, yeah. Person sitting next to me on the plane, a oh, friend yeah. a few days oh. ago. This is the bit where people hit each other with sticks? Yes. Okay. What's happening? A tourney for people who are not nice. Everyone is going to show off. Okay. And fighting everyone. You pick someone to fight, fight each other, um, and whoever wins goes and tells. Antigone, who is the person with purple hair down there. Okay. Fourteen on the back of the shield. I I maybe love these. Let's see. Which ones? Hmm? Oh, the fairy You're fancy correct. ones. Mm -hmm. Those are delightful. Event to make your first event. Okay. Uh, there's so much going on, and it is a two-day event, so you get a little bit more of a taste Sorry. of what we do in the Society for Creative Anachronism. Thank you all for joining us. I have a small token for each one of you, uh, to just to remember your event by. <laughs> Aww. Thank you. Thank you. That is super. <laughs> we all started someplace. We came to our first event. And over many months, and for some of us, many years, we have come to several more. While I'm walking back from the car, I feel like I should explain how the Shabbat thing at BAM got started. It was not planned originally. When Vee was coming, she asked if we had anything in plans. So I asked Val, <laughs> and Val said no, and then said immediately after, we can plan it. <laughs> and so at seven o'clock tonight, we're doing Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohimu Melech Haolam Chalmotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Baruch Ata Adonai Elohimu Melech Haolam Have a good first night? Yeah, um, got tired, and I bet. and also like the the other blio I made did not fit as well, so my shoulders were angry. Oh no! Yeah, no. but this one's comfy. Yeah. It is Saturday early afternoon. Faye is armoring up because apparently there's going to be more fighting, and this is the fighting they're actually doing. More people armoring up. Swords everywhere. <laughs> Some of them are very pretty and shiny. Faye named me in some leather or something, and that means I'm being fought for. I don't totally understand what this means, but it means I should probably be there, right? At least to cheer me on. Oh. This is the, the check the armor to make sure it's safe. Her Majesty asks that we, that her royal blade say, see who is worthy for this. For that, I will take one pass from each of you. Win or lose, doesn't matter. May or may not be because I want to get some fights in today. <laughs> The weapon style is yours. Please tell me quickly and we will fight out. I, I've got whatever we need. Thank you, baby. 
success? Uh, at the Wolf Star Camp, where the Prince and Princess of Vindheim are, okay. to newcomers, they give out new mugs. And the, the funniest thing she said was, um, except to the fact that eventually it will break, mm -hmm. but then you, get, you can get another. Uh, but she needs to make her stew. Does. I understand. Yeah. Friends. Have fun. Danny, both red. Woo! Stay on. On the thing, it's just brown rock. There's no way that's happening. Good job. I fought this one many times. I can see these ones. What up? Please, as you will. I got food. We, we have found a Courtney in her natural environment. Welcome to Stargate Soup Kitchen. Please take soup. Please we have take so soup. much. Yeah. I don't think I can eat soup. You can't, soup any, you can't eat any of the soup. I can't help you. I'm sorry. sorry. I would eat soup if I could. That's me. Hi, V. Hi. Point the first. Second and victory to Duke Crescent. <laughs> Soup for fighter. Yes. All right. What soup? Hello. Hello. More. Hey, Courtney, I kept my promise. I know. Yay! Yay! Something. Potato leaf. Potato leaf. There you go. <laughs> it's so good. Please take more than one. We have so much it soup. All good, good. Goblin. <laughs> we playing with sharp objects? Yes. I'm kind of curious about that one. You need to pick it up. You can hold it. Well, can I trade with you? Oh, the camera. Yes. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. All of the fencing I did was in high school a lot of years ago. <laughs> yep. And it was not rapier. It was foil. Oh, yeah. So if I don't look like I know what I'm doing, Well, that's we why. have lots of people that do really well coming from Olympic-style fencing, mm -hmm. so... I also didn't do much of it, but yeah, this this is cool. Well. Yeah. Just before the pandemic, there was a split from the SCA and uh, a group called the Society for Medieval Arts, I think it's the SMA. They formed uh, specifically because they didn't like the woke direction that the SCA was going in. There was a knight in this kingdom who lost his goddamn mind Jester. and decided that because the SCA was to woke again, um, he was going to take a stand against all of the people who wanted to discriminate against the poor white cis het knights. He wrote this entire screed about how it's okay to, you know, discriminate against people and how this is all like, oh, it's just my opinion that trans people aren't people and don't deserve rights and all of this stuff. It was bad. He got banished and has not been back since, obviously and he went to go play with them. Several other people who have been increasingly unhappy with the way that the SCA has become more inclusive and more diverse have left here to go play there. Our former crown prince, he went to one of their events, one of their coronations, and made formal overtures and a recognition of them and invited all of the people who had felt left behind by the SCA to come back and play as the crown prince of Anstiora with his coronet on. And then the SCA lost its goddamn mind because that's not okay. <laughs> Hanging out with people that don't believe that some of our members are people unilaterally did a thing without consulting your princess, without consulting any of the other people who sit in governance over our organization. You just did that without telling anybody. Most everybody was upset about it. He was like, I'm sorry that you don't understand why I'm right. There was no actual apology in it. Enough people, I think, were very vocal in their lack of support for this guy that uh, the board of directors understood that he was not going to be an effective leader of the kingdom and removed him as crown prince. And that's why we don't have a king. Well, there once was a wolf who would howl at the moon 
And all night long he'd cry and groan, but unless someone else could join in soon, the wolf cries out, carrying the tune. a wolf whose song was sung and on and on their song would run it would start with the moon and end with the sun do you swear to take good care and learn all about this plant and to make sure that it doesn't kill everything else in your garden because give you your first plant of your new garden <laughs> Tornado is now a proud owner of their first spearmint plant. <laughs> Welcome to the SCA! <laughs> Two things I learned. SMA is a great value brand, SCA. And hashtag not my king. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Sword, raise your shield, raise your banner and march to the field. So if ever you need to call on a friend, I'll out to the wolf like you did just then. Da 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 We survived an event! We did! Chaim. <laughs> Is that what they're normally like? Yeah, um, more people than usual, but that's what happens when we have two kingdoms going mm -hmm. to the same place. So what's it like when you have a job at one of those? Because uh, I spent the whole time like not actually having a job and it was a little tricky to figure out what to do with myself. So having a job means you pay far more attention to the time. It's far harder to get sidetracked mm -hmm. and uh, you have to be very good at making polite excuses for why you need to run off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last night was delightful. Um, <laughs> right up until the contact scare. One of the contacts came out right away and the other one, it took multiple rounds of trying. And I thought I was gonna have to sleep in it and try again the next day because my eye had gotten so irritated. And I find a little crumpled <laughs> contact lens and on course. the bathroom counter. But my eye is so irritated. We had to get a chance to double check. So yeah, this is the story of how I did not actually sleep in a contact lens, uh, which would have been bad. Saturday night was such a delight. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the really weird part. I've got a bruise even though I didn't fight. Yeah. How, how do I have a bruise? I didn't, I didn't even get to play with swords. I don't know if regular sword practice is gonna be a thing I can do. I have, an, I have too many hobbies already. We are going to spend the rest of the evening, I think, lying on the floor, um, finishing this bottle of blackberry wine, which is extremely good. Goodbye, kittens. Your car is still full of swords. Always. <laughs> Slaps top of car. This bad boy can fit so many swords in it. This ba bad boy can fit so many peasants in it. <laughs> gonna miss this one. I'll have to go over to your square soon. You will. <laughs> I am home. I am quite tired. Uh, travel and then being at an event for four days will do that. This was an absolute delight of a trip and a wonderful first event, um, but I think that was largely down to the people I'm with. I've known Courtney since the earliest days of both of our YouTube channels, and I've known Faye for almost as long, so it was amazing to finally meet them in person. And that seems to, I guess, reflect uh, what a lot of people's experience of the SCA is. Like, if you're with good people, 
you'll have a good time. I didn't make too many of the classes or official events, um, mainly because I was too busy just hanging out with people and taking it all in to even open the schedule. At a future event, I would probably want to make sure I made it to a few more of those things because that's a side of what these events are like that I missed. I didn't have any bad experiences uh, specific to anti-Semitism or specific to me. I did see a whole lot of white people in Middle Eastern clothes. I know like the SCA's official policy is that it's okay to dress as a different ethnicity if you're well-researched, but for an outsider to prove the, the quality or well-researchedness to another bunch of outsiders, I don't really know how anyone would expect to evaluate or enforce that. And the sheer prevalence of it does give me a strong whiff of Orientalism. Like, I know this is normalized within the SEA, but as someone coming from outside of the SEA, that's what it looks like. I sat through two sessions of royal court, or I, I think it was royal court because the ruler was present. I confirmed that I have really limited patience for SCA bureaucracy. I'm told that the idea is, well, oh, everyone's nobility. It's just more fun if everyone's nobility. If you think it's just more fun, when everyone's nobility. What does that say about your attitudes towards working people and class? In conclusion, I could see myself going to a few of these a year. Um, I think it's actually more likely that I'll travel um, and like go to events in other places. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope if you're considering going to SCA things, this gives you a better idea of what to expect. I especially want to thank everyone who I met there who recognized me or didn't recognize me, was kind, showed me around, uh, fed me, invited me to sit with them, explained things to me, and agreed to be on camera. Tell me in the comments about your first big reenactment event, or if you haven't been to such an event, which one you'd like to go to and why. While you're there, hit the button to tell YouTube you liked what you saw, and subscribe for more costume commentary. You can also ring the bell if you want to take your chances with YouTube's notifications. Now, I need to sleep the sleep of travel recovery, so I will see you next time. Bye!